What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and today is Just the Tip Tuesdays. This is a series where I will be taking comments from down below and also things that I've seen in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and giving you all short little tips so that you can improve your studio photography. Today I will be bringing you three huge studio photography mistakes that are messing up your sessions. I do have New back in the studio with me today. You all know her from the dramatic lighting video. Comment on her Instagram, Brent sent you, and we're going to get right into this content. So the first mistake that we're going to go over is not cutting out all of the ambient light in the space. The first thing that we should see before we ever turn on our trigger, the first shot should be just a straight black screen. This is going to give us a blank canvas to work from and that means all the light that we bring in after this is us painting on that canvas. Let me demonstrate how you do this. We're going to cut our camera on and it will differ based on the space that you're in. I am in a space that has no natural light coming in, so I'm only really trying to cancel out these fluorescent bulbs that are shooting onto my scene. So I'm going to start with an aperture of f8, an ISO of 100, and a shutter speed of 1 250th. And when I take that first shot, all I have is a black screen, so now I am able to paint on this blank canvas. The second mistake is going to be not having a catch light in the model's eye. And the best way that I've found to do this is to use the modeling lamp on your strobe. So I'm going to turn my modeling lamp all the way up to full power. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right in front of my subject and I just want her to look straight at me. And what I'm looking for here is to ensure that there is a small circle of light in the model's eyes. So that way when I come over here and take this test shot, you can see, and it is clearly illustrated, that there is a catch light in the eye. Three, two. I like to do these as a medium shot just so I can really get a nice focus on the eye. And what you'll notice is when there's a catch light in the eye, it really brings some life to the portrait. It really brings life to the subject. And if you compare this to a photo that has no catch light in the eye, you will clearly see the difference. This is not a hard, fast rule, but it is one that I think you should learn first before you decide to break it. Let's move on to mistake number three. The last and final mistake that I want to go over is rushed or bad composition. I can't tell you how many times that I give my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients the camera and the first thing that they do is just start snapping away at their photos. Now, if we've corrected mistakes one and two, the last thing that we should be able to do is simply breathe and take really good photos. But there's two different types of composition mistakes that I want to harp on today. And the first of which is shooting down at your client or subject. So instead of coming here straight on at a nice eye level, a lot of clients will end up shooting down as their first method of shooting a client. And what you will start to notice when you're not shooting eye level with your client is that you're gonna make them look very small. And again, this is not a hard and fast rule, but it is one that you should know before you break it. A lot of clients do not like the look that it gives when they are shot down at, and I understand why that happens. You are shooting at your eye level, when in reality, we have to start to learn to shoot at the model or the subject's eye level, utilizing the lens as that guideline. The second, and honestly what I think is a more egregious, and if you wanna just give me like triangle, a more egregious um, act of composition is cutting off our subject at the joints. So let's do a few shots here, we'll just do five, just kinda of move five different ways. It's cutting off our subject at the joints. So I'm gonna take a few different shots here just to kinda of illustrate what it is that I'm talking about. Do two more here, and then one last one. So one thing that you're gonna notice across all of those shots is that if we just took our time, took a breath, took a step back or waited before we snapped off that shutter button, we wouldn't do things like cut off the elbows, cut off the wrists. When you cut off a subject's joints, it looks very unnatural. It makes the portrait very jarring. And while you won't be able to tell immediately when you look at it, you will be able to tell something is off. So now we're gonna do five photos, similar posing new, and I'm just gonna show what you can do in order to make them a little bit better. So three, two, good. Take a nice step back here, three, two. Cool, so now we can come in close because she's got the elbows a little tighter. Three, two, two more, nice. Even tighter, we'll come in closer and get that frame. Three, two, last one. Nice, we'll go a little wider here. Yep, three, two. And again, the biggest thing that we want to take away from this segment is just take your time. 
right? You've got the lights all set up. You've got the settings in the camera all set up. You don't need to just run around snapping photos. It's okay to take a breath and let your model sit in that pose. We don't wanna be cutting off people at the joints. That's gonna be mistake number three. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for my top three huge studio photography mistakes. The big takeaway that I want you to get from this is just breathe. Sometimes you just need to take your time in order to get things set up properly in the studio and then you can have fun and just go ahead and get to snapping. I am joined again by Miss New. New, where can they find you? At that new new. I'm gonna put it down here. That will be on all socials and we can't wait to catch you all in the next Just the Tip Tuesday.